In this video, I'm going to share everything you need to franchise a gas station. First, we're going to explore different franchise options. We're going to cover cost, requirements, and profitability. Next, we're going to look at margins, followed by alternatives if you can't afford to build your own. Next, we're going to look at the pros and cons of owning a gas station. And lastly, the future of gas stations with EV coming along. Let's start with the first option being Circle K. So in order for you to open your own Circle K location, you will need a net worth of anywhere between $500,000 and $1 million. A net worth is essentially your asset assets minus your liabilities. So if you have $100,000 in your bank account cash and you have $10,000 in credit card debt, then your net worth is $90,000. Followed by that, you're going to need at least $100,000 in liquid assets. So this is cash, stocks, bonds, and so on. The initial investment to build your own Circle K location is anywhere between $1.3 million to $4.8 million. I will show you in a bit how you can open your own location with just a little bit over $200,000. Now their royalty fee is anywhere between 25 to 5.5%. The initial investment includes a $25,000 franchise fee, equipment, tech, initial supplies and inventory, construction, training and support, which is like classroom format. Think of the initial investment as everything you're going to need to start your own business. Also, don't forget that each franchise does things slightly different when it comes to selling certain products and services. For example, Circle K sells fast food, proprietary products and other necessities. So you will also need to think about the setup and inventory for these things on top of the fuel business. Now let's look at franchising a 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven is probably the franchise with the lowest barriers to enter in this list. They do things a little bit differently from other gas stations. Now to begin, they have a franchise fee of $25,000. If you don't know what a franchise fee is, it's essentially buying the rights to operate the business. To open your own 7-Eleven, you will need liquid capital of anywhere between fifty dollars and $150,000. You will also need to put down a down payment on the inventory, which is anywhere between twenty dollars and $40,000. The initial investment is anywhere between five dollars to $750,000. 7-Eleven also has an internal financing program and can provide up to 65% financing on the initial investment. 7-Eleven does not have a fixed royalty. It depends on the location. The only thing public is their advertising fee, which is 1%. Royalties are usually collected by your franchisor on a monthly basis on gross sales. Now, a lot of people wonder what the franchise fee and the royalties are for so let's have a look royalties essentially help franchisors cover the cost of certain things and of course on top of that they need to profit off of each location some examples of expenses that the franchisor covers are certain equipment purchase or rent real property taxes certain building maintenance advertising bookkeeping back office support inventory audits, product development, merchandise assistance, and ongoing business advisory assistance. The third company we're going to explore is BP Gas Stations. They have about 18,500 service stations worldwide, and they're one of the most profitable gas stations in the US. The two more profitable gas stations are Shell and Exxon, but we won't be covering them because Shell has nearly no opportunities unlike the others we're covering in this video. It's extremely competitive, but you can always apply on their website if you're interested. Now back to BP. They have a franchise fee of $30,000. The minimum liquid capital required is $700,000. This can be a combination of any cash securities. Remember, these companies will only allow you to franchise if you can afford to obtain funding for their initial investment, which is anywhere between $1.2 and $6.6 .6 million. And again, you can always obtain loans for the initial investment. But do keep in mind that BP is one of the most profitable gas stations, so it comes with a hefty price to pay. Now, BP also sells way more than just fuel. They sell food, drinks, Drinks and automotive supplies. So the initial inventory for any franchise will also include the products that they usually sell. The ongoing royalty is 3% and another 5% for advertising. I kept BP gas station for second to last because their cost is extremely similar to the bigger players like Chevron. Chevron happens to be the fourth most profitable gas station with over 19,000 locations worldwide. The initial investment actually can be lower than BP gas stations and can be anywhere between $1.5 million and $2.5 million. You will need a minimum 500 thousand dollars in liquid assets to qualify now let's break down some of the initial investment costs lighting and signage is anywhere between 40 and seventy five thousand dollars depending on how big the lot is each pump ranges from 16 to twenty four thousand dollars and underground fuel tanks are about thirty thousand dollars gas station canopies are between 35 and eighty thousand dollars the build of the convenience store is the biggest expense at about five hundred thousand dollars these costs like the pump cost is going to be roughly the same for any franchises now that you have an idea at the the requirements and the cost of some of these different gas stations, let's talk about net income. Now keep in mind for any of these franchises, whether they're mentioned in the video or not, the amount that you're going to make and the amount you're going to spend to open one is highly, highly variable.
available as it depends on the location and the size of the property. Also, depending on which franchise you end up going for, some have car washes, alcohol, lottery, and so on. This is extra income, so if any of these upsells are interesting to you, make sure to look for a franchise that offers what you're looking for. I do want to know that a study showed that stations make most of their profits in their stores and not actually through gas. The idea is to have very competitive gas prices and when they go in the store, you can make money off of that transaction. That being said, it's impossible to know how much each location makes, but we can explore at some data and look at the average. Data shows that Chevron has a net income of $335,000 for one unit after all expenses and on the other side, a 7-Eleven makes $75,000, both per year. There's not enough data for the other franchises to know their net income. However, they average at $1 million per location. On another note, I did find this chart that shows the typical gross profit margins of convenience store items. If I were looking to buy a gas station, I would definitely look at a franchise that carries the first three, so health and beauty, candy, and general merch. Now, if you want to open a gas station, but these numbers just scare you, I have two alternatives for you, which is going to be more affordable than building a gas station from scratch. The first one is buying an existing gas station. This is a whole video of its own, but if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to film one. And also while you're there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Now, every franchise should have a page like this where you can find franchise opportunities for sale. By purchasing an existing business, you don't need to spend millions on the initial investment. In fact, you will know from day one what you can expect in terms of numbers. Just make sure the business is profitable and you can know that for sure by asking for a reconciled financial statement. This is an accounting process by which you have different data to compare and verify all the information is correct. And this is not just for gas station, this is for any existing business that you wish to purchase. The second option is taking an existing convenience store and converting it to a franchise. For example, converting an existing convenience store to 7-Eleven can cost anywhere between just $45,000 and $60,000. No information on cost is available for Circle K, but it is possible. And there's also plenty of other franchises that have this option. Now, if you're considering this business or any other business, you absolutely need to know the pros and cons. A major pro at every single gas station is that they have at least one product which is always in demand. And it's usually the first place we think of when we need of something necessary, especially late at night. The second one is upsell. You can sell so much more than just fuel. The third one is you don't need skilled labor for employment positions. You can pretty much hire anyone, although that also comes with some cons. There's plenty more pros out there, but these two, in my opinion, are the most important. The first con of this business is that it has high levels of fluctuations. There's supply, there's demand, there's pricing, and so many things that are out of the owner's control. The second one is the extended hours. Gas stations are usually open 24 seven, even during holidays. The other one is gas stations operate on skinny margins. Your business is highly dependent on volume. You need to sell a lot to make a lot of profit. Another one is, and we've seen it throughout this video, is that it's very, very expensive to start one. Last con is you cannot just get out of your franchise when you feel like it. All franchises have an agreement term and some even go to decades. And if you don't respect it, you will be fined even if you decide to sell it to someone that will operate the exact same as you. So make sure to consider Consider this business as a long-term commitment. Now I know what you're thinking this entire video. EVs are coming and gas stations are gonna die. This is actually so far from the truth and the big corporations already have a plan to survive this. Shell is already on it with their EV charging stations. BP already has 22,000 EV charge points and aim to have 100,000 globally by 2030. And the key here is around 90% are rapid or ultra fast. I have an EV and some of these charging stations literally suck. After an hour, I'm not even at 10%. So their aim to have an ultra fast charging station is really, really good. 7-Eleven aims to build one of the largest and most compatible EV fast charging networks of any retailer in North America. Before you move forward with any of these franchises, make sure to see if their long-term strategy aligns with yours. We all have to have a vision for our business, so we need to make sure that the franchises vision aligns with ours. I will have a bunch of links in the description box below for you to apply to any of these franchises. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I'll see you in my next business idea video. Bye!